Reset the timers, boys. It's time once again for a completely unnecessary mistake. And do I even need to tell you the group that is responsible for making the change? Manjaro, not of the x86 variety, this time of the arm side instead. Once again, broke something massive. Now, it's one thing to break it on Manjaro, to break it in the Manjaro packages, which everybody outside of Manjaro can very easily ignore. It's another thing to make a patch and then upstream it over the head of the affected project, breaking it on everything based on Arch Linux Arm. Now, to be fair, the Arch Linux Arm maintainer is absolutely at fault for letting this patch go through, but this patch should have never existed in the first place. So, a couple of days ago, this report was made on the Asahi Linux subreddit. M1 MacBook Air Linux Asahi Edge won't boot. Now, for anyone completely unaware, Asahi Linux is the project to get Linux running on the Apple Silicon. Now, in the case of this report, while it looks like it's not booting, that's not the case. What's actually happening is it's booting perfectly fine, but the instant the Xorg loads, it crashes out. Now, no one really suspected that anything was off here. Hector Martin, otherwise known as Markin, just thought, Xorg is terrible and don't use Xorg and the problem will probably go away. But it turns out the problem is a little bit deeper than that. Now to understand what the problem is and why this is happening, we need to go back a couple of months to October of 2022. Extra slash Mesa Add us he driver to Arch 64. This is being made on the package build repo for Arch Linux Arm. Basically, this is a repo that includes all of the build scripts for everything in the Arch Linux Arm repo. This is just the general way that Arch Linux manages stuff, and it works basically the exact same way over on the x86 side as well. We've looked at this repo before, and if you're ever curious about what's going on with the package, this is always a good place to come to. But hold on a second, this is Arch Linux and Arch Linux Arm. Manjaro doesn't maintain this, so how are they the ones at fault? We'll get to that in just a moment. Before then, let's have a look at the pull request itself. This is by Strit. Mesa has been working on the Asahi driver for about a year and is still in pretty rapid development. The Asahi driver is used by Apple-based devices with the M1 and M2 Apple Silicon chips. Add this driver so it can be used on Apple hardware. And the commit is very simple. It's basically nothing really changing. It's changing the package version, upping it to 1.1 or the package rel, and also changing a simple build option, the Gallium option, including Asahi. This is going to make sure the Asahi driver is compiled into Mesa and is able to be used. Okay then, so what's the big deal here? When you're using Linux on Apple Silicon right now today, you probably shouldn't be using mainline Mesa. What you should be using instead is something called Mesa Asahi Edge. This is a modified version of Mesa and set up to be the exact version needed to make everything work the way that it should. I'm not going to say a good experience, but it's going to be an optimal experience based on what the developers understand. However, by all accounts, Mainline Mesa should be working and it shouldn't be crashing Xorg. At a bare minimum, it should be giving you a usable system. Now, whilst it says closed over here, it's not closed without merger. So it was actually merged in a separate PR, being this one here, which added a separate thing which isn't important today. But as we can see down here, this added the Asahi driver. And this was added all the way back in January. And with that merger, a new version of the Mesa package was released. And this sat in the Arch Linux ARM repos for a couple of months without 
anybody really noticing a problem, most people using Asahi know they should be using Mesa Asahi Edge, so no one even realized there was an actual problem here until that Reddit post was made. And when Hector realized the problem, he had this to say over on his Mastodon. Lovely. Another Arch Linux arm moment, the reason why XOR crashes on Asahi when you use the new kernel without our downstream Mesa is that Alarm Arch Linux arm helpfully started enabling the Asahi driver in their upstream packages some time ago, which is useless and was only there for testing, without asking us, even though it's not part of the default driver set for ARM64. Now, unlike a lot of the other upstreaming dramas out there, this isn't a matter of pushing a patch that adds extra functionality into the project. This driver is already present in Mesa, it's just not accessible when you normally go and run it and normally go and compile it. But why would there be broken code in upstream Mesa? That just doesn't seem to make any sense. Well, this is a pretty normal development practice. The upstream code is hidden behind a build option that Mesa specifically does not set and does not instruct distributions to set. Some code is merged as part of the upstreaming process, i.e. for build testing in CI but it's not intended to be used by end users and is not what we're shipping in Asahi Linux. To my knowledge, this has not been an issue with any other distribution since even a minute of testing would reveal that it doesn't work. Literally booting it with this patch enabled, it will not load Xorg, the patch shouldn't be there. Mesa will be backporting a fix to neutralize the option at any rate. It never occurred to me that someone would go out of their way to ship a broken build of Mesa. And Hector also had more to say on this. Dude, it was broken by design. It is your job as a distro not to do stupid things that breaks users. That includes not enabling non-default build options without testing them. It doesn't matter that it's in a stable release, you can't just randomly change build options without testing or understanding anything, then blame upstream when things break for everyone. Setting build options properly is your job as a distro, and if you can't do it, you should leave it at the default. Having something like this in upstream Mesa is completely normal. Always read the documentation before touching any of the build options. If you don't understand the build options, do not touch them because you're probably going to break something. Now, this takes us into where this is a Manjaro problem. You might have noticed that Strit signed this off as Dan Johansson, Strit at Manjaro.org. But who is Strit? Is this just some random no-name Manjaro developer that, you know, just happened to submit a patch and happened to use the Manjaro email. No, no it's actually not. This is someone who should absolutely know better and is not shipping something that is completely broken on ARM. Let's have a look at his website and also the Manjaro team page. So, strits.dk, Dan Johansson, project lead on the Manjaro ARM project. And over here, ARM lead developer. Works on ARM additions, including tooling and infrastructure. Dan is a hardware guy. He enjoys fiddling with boards. This is the project leader of Manjaro ARM, submitting patches to Arch Linux ARM that he did zero testing on, because if you did any testing on this patch, you would know it was broken. This isn't one of those patches where, you know, you run it and it doesn't break it straight away. It's like, you know, under this really weird specific condition, it causes a crash. This causes a crash if you load the system with Xorg. That is all. The only way you could think this patch was stable is if you didn't even try it with Xorg, you only used it on Wayland. 
And if by some chance he doesn't even have an Apple device to test this on, he should not be submitting any patches involving Asahi Linux. If it cannot be tested on Apple Silicon, you are not the person who should be doing this. Now, once again, I want to be very clear. Manjaro are not the only ones at fault here, but they do play a major part. Strit should absolutely have tested his patch, realized within 10 seconds the patch did not work, and not submitted it. However, the same can be said for this Arch Linux ARM maintainer that merged the patch without testing it. Maybe they compiled it and saw Mesa compiles just fine, and didn't really do anything more than that, because they clearly didn't test this on Apple Silicon. And if you're not going to test something on Apple Silicon, you shouldn't be accepting patches involving Apple Silicon. I get these Apple devices are expensive, but if nobody on your team has the devices to test these, you shouldn't even be in the position where you're accepting packages for them. Why are there packages that aren't being tested at all? And Hector didn't just comment on Mastodon, he also commented on this thread as well, saying, FYI, this PR is the reason why Alarm Mesa Arch Linux Arm Mesa has been broken with edge kernels on Xorg. Please do not send nonsense like this without understanding the consequences. That upstream driver is useless until the UAPI stabilizes and only intended to be built for testing purposes. It cannot and has never worked in this state and actively broke things when enabled. To this Arch Linux ARM maintainer, please consult with us before merging random Asahi stuff from clueless Manjaro developers. Thanks. And I can understand why Hector is really annoyed with Manjaro. Like, this is not the first time that Manjaro has shipped things or tried to patch things that involved his project and were completely broken. Why is it so difficult if you're not in a position to test things involving Asahi, shooting Hector a DM, asking, hey, is it alright if I do this or this? Is it alright if I ship this version? Is it alright if I add this patch or that patch? Just send Hector a DM and he'll respond pretty quickly. Like, Hector's DMs are open and he'll get back to you, especially if you're involved in a project like Manjaro Arm. And just that little bit of effort is going to ensure that 99% of these issues just vanish. Because what he's going to say is ship the thing that we know works on Asahi and don't ask about anything else. Also, as of recording this, the patch has been reverted and it's no longer an issue anymore. Now, I know in these videos, it can come off as if I'm saying that everybody involved in Manjaro is incompetent, nobody should use Manjaro, it's just a waste of a project. But there are people in the project who are good actors who are trying to make things better. For example, this person that was responding to Hector and Alyssa. Hello, Markin. I am part of the Manjaro ARM team. I am really sorry for what the team has been doing with Apple Silicon support. I have been following Asahi chats and am also testing it locally. I'll discuss this mistake with the team and see how we can avoid such major mistakes. But honestly, it seems like Hector is just done with this and has no interest in dealing with Manjaro. Heck. I'd argue that bad actors in the open source collaboration space like Manjaro should be ignored when it comes to stuff like this, because it's not everyone else's job to work around the explosions they cause. But let me know your thoughts. Do you think it's that big of a deal? Do you think Hector is overreacting? Do you think this makes perfect sense? And yeah, stop messing with his project. Just do the thing that he's already said works and stop trying to change that. I would love to know. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scribe, Sally, Barrow, Pay linked down below. That's going to be it for me. And... Um...
Uh, I don't have an outro. Bye.